The headlines this morning on the news. Governor Soludo says a Kulobe flyover will improve socioeconomic output in Southeast. AFGA commences nationwide electronic registration. NAVDAC warns against using diclovers for food preservation. China claims to have landed on manned spacecraft at the far side of the moon. Before the, good morning and welcome to the news this morning. My name is Ifi Onachuku. Before the news in details, here is a special message. Governor Chuku Masaludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. And now the news in detail. Governor Chuku Masaludo says the ongoing Ekulobia flyover is a project being built to stand the test of time. He stated this when he embarked on an inspection visit to the site in company of his wife, Onye. The details. According to the governor, the ongoing transformation of the entire area is not just good for Anambra but will be a game changer for the southeast once completed. The governor recalled the gridlock that was a usual occurrence in the area, expressing optimism that the massive chaos which the people living and doing business there normally experiences will soon be a thing of the past. He explained that currently the project is at the pre-stressed cast stage one of the first in the country in terms of quality. We're looking forward to it. For me as an ordinary man, I just want to deliver a quality infrastructure to the people that will endure and endure for decades and uh, if not centuries, as it were. As you can also see, the massive uh, bus terminal coming up uh, right there. All of these are all designed to be completed uh, later part of this year. I'm looking forward to coming. I will be coming on inspection regularly who are building for the 21st and 22nd century and centuries to come and therefore quite a number we need to that's what is called creative destruction um some old will have to give way for the new but once the new comes then it comes with its own dynamics and so on so some will go and you know we are dualizing as well from amorbia all the way to Ecolobia here and then from here down to Oga up to the boundary with Imo State, Akokwa. And uh, that will become a major expressway. And, um, and uh, once the Imo angle is also completed, then between Oka and Oweri will be less than an hour. Uh, so we're trying to, I mean, this doesn't just have uh, transformation for Anambra, it also has quite very fundamental for the southeast economy. The commissioner for works, engineer Ifa Nyukoma, among others, were part of the visit. A celebration of the age long rich cultural heritage of Oka people, it was during the 2024 Umwoku Day, as indigenous and residents of Oka lined up on major roads to catch a glimpse of the festivities. The event, which had the significance of Oka people going down to one of Oka villages, Umuku, that lives apart due to tribal wars, and invite them for the grand finale of the cultural festivities, holding after four Igbo market days at Ululimoka, located in Amenyoka. Our correspondent, Kenichi Kuchukode, has the details. <laughs> The procession, which usually starts from Oka through to Amobia to Umopu, we are seeing different groups, individuals and Makure joining to Umopu with lots of funfair and merriment along the route. Speaking on the event, the presiding chief priest of Imoka Deity, Mr. Wamma Naki, explained that the event was to intimate their Umoku brothers of this year's celebration, pointing that the festival doesn't have a permanent date, but rather celebrated based on reading of the moon. Mr. Naki further noted that the celebration is significant to Oka people as it brings them together and promotes conviviality of brotherhood among them, advising Oka people to celebrate in peace and moderation, staying clear from trouble. Bubbles. 
Anna Buena, na me, Anna Bobuena, April, Anna Bobuena, June, Ogo, Gaji, Mali, Bobo, Ogo, no one robot alongside Nakabayan, who wake Baba, a wishy, whom you judge at the Chibu. So, Emazia, go to where the Kayu, Jabba, Shabia Kova, now all go because all your no look good by the Lublisha. You have got to be that way. Oh, Mamma Oka, on your Christmas sign, on your waist sign, on your woody bunny. The chairman of Ezinano Youth, Oka, is Moku Yunuki, who was among the Oka group that processed Umoku, said it's all joy celebrating Oka rich cultural heritage, praying for peace and progress in Oka, advocating for more political leadership positions for Oka people. It was all joyous moment at Umoku village with different groups personalities and masquerade arriving the village here amongst all kinds of music and sounds which some youth engage themselves in show of strength with Ken Whipping, Ipiawa, the committee chairman of Igwe Moka 2024, Mr. Anna Obiako, who was observed walking around with some members to ensure peace and order during the day. In Oka, it's been Kenetuku Tokodi for ABS News. The Old Progressive Brand Alliance, APGA, has commanded its nationwide electronic registration. Governor Chukuma Saludo, who is the national leader of the party, performed this registration alongside his wife, Lone, and daughter, Dora, at the award in his Sofia Agota Council area. ABS correspondent, government house correspondent, Eji Kabana, filed the report taken from our studio. The governor described the event as historic, saying that once again, APGA is showing the light as the first political party to be wholly and completely digital, with in line with Anambra's mantra of everything technology, technology everywhere. Governor Soludo noted that with the process, a national register will be generated and updated periodically as more people register, asking APGA faithful to register with their complete family members and the world. He stressed that members will be issued a different kind of membership card that looks like the current voter's card, revealing that the party is trying to reinstate the supremacy of APGA as well as demonstrate that their duty is to the party and the people. We are commencing uh, e-registration. Going to be a nationwide registration program. We're beginning here now in Anambra. We get down to the 36 states was FCT and generate a national register, membership register. And as new people get registered, it will be uploaded, updated, a register will be being updated. And we are going to have a different kind of a membership card, not that paper thing. Okay? We'll have a membership card that looks like the current voter's card. Okay, you can see that the biometrics is captured. Huh? The, pump, the index finger. So your biometrics happen to be part, will be part of your membership. So that whenever you come and you then scan your membership card, your details will do work. Well. Yeah. Earlier, the national chairman of APUGA, Barita Sly Ezo Kenwa, pointed out that as his full initiative, the governor has set the tone, making a clear statement that APUGA will evolve, being the foremost progressive party in the country. Being the foremost progressive party in Nigeria, that we are going to set the pace in everything, I will owe that to you. APUGA, with this digital or digitization of our membership database, we are going to become the first political party to go wholly digital. The state chairman of APGA, Barrister Ifatu Obiokoye, said that the project clearly demonstrates that registration is at the world level. Yeah, just as the Ethiopia World Chairman, Mrs. Nonso Enwalum, said that with the innovation, it is not going to be business as usual in the party as the car shows that the carrier is a full member of APGA. The continuous registration can either be done using the online or offline platform. The process involves profile capturing with the custom software under the party's control, authenticated and reflected down to the polling unit. To register online, members can log on to www.apga.ng. 
In an exciting turn of events, Agule is a Chipu community in Agwata Council area of Anambra State has become a vibrant hub of nightlife, showcasing the rapid growth under the new executive of the town union, the once quiet community where darkness normally welcomes you, especially while driving through the town at night, has now transformed into a bustling hot spot, drawing crowds from neighboring communities and all walks of life. Correspondent Justice Onyemobi found in the report taken from our studios. At about 11 o'clock in the night, some aged men were seen playing draft games and some engaging in buying and selling as they witnessed the electric atmosphere. Visitors flocked the area to experience the vibrant nightlife scene and other myriad of entertainment happening as the solar street lamp gleams. In an interview, the present general of the community, Nze John Paul S. Mwaka, said, apart from the solar street light which is being installed in the community, the executives also have plans of embarking on perimeter fencing of the community secondary school and installation of aluminium conductor on already installed pole in the area. The PG also revealed that he was driven by the governor's call for, for participating in the grassroots development through the PPCP initiative that will help to fast track the development of the state while calling on all the community members to take what the current administration has done as their own project. Perimeter fencing of community secondary school and um, installation of um, the aluminium conductor on the poles we planted. We hope to carry that two projects simultaneously. But as it is, we, have, we are facing the installation of the solar pole that commenced the day before yesterday and we have captured the major road. We are not going to leave the job for the security personnel alone. All of us to join us to assist the security people. Adding their voice, Engineer Chige Mezumafo, Ofu Dele Nawe, and Madam Ezugu Chinyarem thank the new executives for their outstanding work, saying that the new street lights will surely boost the activities of the area when completed. To light up the road, to enable road users to be able to see the new lights. So, the tremendous one, comparing uh, Adelaide to other communities, you see that uh, there is a wake up call to other local leaders. Contributing the Council of Representing Aglaze Chukwu Ward, Honorable Daniel Izundu, the PRO of the Community, Engineer Dike Agozie, and Godson Onye Dikachuku, said that under the leadership of Okamadike, as they call him, and its executives, the community has witnessed a tremendous change in leadership, calling on all well meaning indigenous of the community to come out in mass to support the new administration. To the special grace of God, we have witnessed all the what we have promised to the community. So, and uh, under the leadership of uh, Omadike. So, and um, we have seen it, the Operation Lighting a Grateful Community. So, that is one of the agenda of our administration. Earlier, the President General, alongside with other stakeholders from Aguata local government area, joined the member representing Aguata two constraints in the Anambra State House of Assembly, Honorable Tony Mobike, in laying foundation stones for the new ultra modern toilet at Aglaze Tuku Community Secondary School. The Vika Christ Holy Church International, Amanuke, Reverend Pastor Patrick Chibata, has challenged Christians to always seek for reconciliation and humbly draw closer to God with heart of thanksgiving. Reverend Pastor, uh, Pastor Chibata, who stated this in a sermon, said, God is ever faithful with passionate, compassionate heart to forgive his children and show them mercy so as to grow in faith. Region correspondent Amaka Chibuzukoye tells us more. Reverend Pastor Chibata, who is the district priest of Christ's Holy Church, Amanuke District, reminded all the church to study the word of God each day and apply it in all they do so as to be successful as well, so in the paths of righteousness. Kasih 
For the vicar, Holy Trinity Anglican Church, Amanuke, Reverend Christian Obijofo, encourage parents to instruct their words on words of God and importance of knowing Jesus Christ from birth. Reverend Obijofo noted that Jesus Christ started early his mission of evangelism, that everyone should prepare the minds of their children to emulate Christ, instilling them wisdom, knowledge, and directives of God, so as to grow with it and frown at the state of things in today's society, noting that some of the youths have gone astray, which is as a result of bad parenting. He further challenged parents to jointly monitor, mentor, and mold their children so that when they see that their parents share things in common, they will champion for peace, togetherness, and positive aspects of living. And when they get it right at the family level, the society will be a serene place to dwell. Bible says, teach every child the way he should go. So the way he grew up, he will never depart from it. So it is very, very important that we parents will always instruct our children the word of the Lord. So that when they grow, they will not be like this, because the world we are in now, you know, I don't know where the world is going to. The new age, I don't know where they are going. But if we fail to do our part before then, we see that the world we, are, we will see in some years to come will be a, a disastrous world. From Amanuke, Amaka Chibuzo, Ukoi, ABS News. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control has once again warned Nigerians about the hazardous practice of using dangerous chemicals to preserve food items. Specifically, the agency has banned and emphasized the dangers associated with dark clovers, a chemical commonly utilized by traders to safeguard food from spoilage. In a statement signed by resident media consultant to NAPDAC, Shayo Akintola, the agency showed concerns over the recent viral video showing individuals using dangerous chemicals to preserve food items like beans, stockfish, and crayfish. The Director General NAPDAC, Professor Modishola Adeye, urged traders and merchants to desist from using unauthorized chemicals and food meant for human consumption. China says it's Uncrewed craft has successfully landed on the far side of the moon, an unexplored place almost no one tries to go. The China National Space Administration, CNSA, said that the Change 6 touched down in the South Pole Aitken Basin at 6 to 2, 3 a.m. Beijing time on Sunday morning. Launched on 3rd May, the mission aims to collect precious rock and soil from this region for the first time in history. The probe could extract some of the moon's oldest rocks from a huge crater on its south pole. The Nigeria Under-20 Women's Team, the Falconets, who know their FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup group opponents on Wednesday, June 5th, 2024. The draw taking place in Bogota, Colombia, will see the 24 qualified teams divided into six groups of four teams each for the final competition. Falconets who have qualified for every edition of the competition and have been runners-up twice, losing to Germany on both occasions in 2010 and 2014, secured a place in the tournament to be staged in Colombia from Saturday, August 31 to Sunday, September 22, 2024, alongside other African countries such as Ghana, Cameroon and Morocco. A memorial service has been held in honor of late Dr. Theophilos Onwe Bunamo Keke at St. Michael and All Angels Anglican Church, Norfia, in Njikoka, local government area of Anambra State. The event attracted family members from the United States, friends from all walks of life, colleagues and well-wishers who gathered to pay their respects and celebrate the life of a man whose contributions to the community and the field of medicine were deeply valued. Correspondent Blessing Dennis has the details. Dr. KK, age 69, was born on May 22, 1952, and died on November 29, 2021, after a brief illness, and was buried in Florida, United States 
according to his wish. According to his biography, Dr. Okeke dedicated his life to the practice of medicine, using it as a way to serve others throughout his career and exuded a strong work ethic, compassion, and apathy towards others. In his sermon, the officiating priest, Venerable Onyinye Ilione, said Dr. Okeke was not only a remarkable physician, was also a beacon of life whose life was a testament to dedication, compaction, and unwavering commitment to service. Why you okay, okay, family? Why do you memorial service here in this church? It's honor. That's good. Because the left hand of the U.S., most entire family, including the brothers and the sisters, to do this memorial service. And so, we encourage them until the good legacy that the children was left behind. In our homily, we discovered that uh, Dr. Chephilos is a loving father, a caring brother, uh, an ambassador of the people of North here, where he came from. Speaking shortly after the service, the brother of the deceased, Mr. Sonny Okeke praised his late brother's dedication, compassionate care, and generosity, noting that he will miss him dearly. Oh, well, who gives him And in born a man, only a selfish person. Only a man named Maria and a self for me back at the Madras Town. Just because no one gave up for Doribo, or surely a high age of more for Doribo, who was the main lady. In an interview, Dr. Okeke's wife, Mrs. Pamela Okeke, expressed her heartbreak over the loss of her husband, describing him as a gift from God, a real gem, and a generous man whose reputation, kindness, selflessness, and compassion we are worthy of emulation. <laughs> Reminiscing on the life spent by his father, the second son of the deceased, Andrew Okeke, said, Words cannot describe how he feels as he lost a role model, mentor, and a father in all, promising to forever hold all the lessons his father taught him while praying for God to accept his soul. A cousin of the deceased, Mr. Michael Okeke, elogized him as a wonderful, loving, captivating, and generous brother while praying for his soul to rest in peace. The event featured the paying of tributes, condolences, and masquerade display from Nokia in Injikoka Council area. Blessing them is ABS News. That's the news this morning, but do remember that you can follow news and programs on ABS from any part of the world by linking our Facebook page. You can also follow us at Anambra Broadcasting Service. Subscribe to our YouTube at ABS Television, Oka, on X at ABS Radio TV, and on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. You can also log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. And now before we go, let's take a look at the main points again. Governor Soludo has said a Pulobia flyover will improve socioeconomic output in Southeast. APGA has commenced nationwide electronic registration of its members. NAVDAC has warned against using dichlorous for food preservation. And from the Soaring Foreign Scene, China claims to have landed on manned spacecraft at the far side of the moon. Thanks a lot for joining us. But do remember that Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turn around maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. My name is Ifi Onachuku, and thanks a lot for joining us. Do stand by for the rest of Good Morning Anambra this morning. <laughs>